This is a message from your guides reading for serious business. All right, so I have three group crystals here. I have an added green fluorite, and then I have the same two that I've had for like a month now. So sodalite and zoazite. And then I pulled my lapis lazuli for your reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and surround this in some positive space with the lapis lazuli. Okay, so I'm going to go over these two crystals, though. So I have my lapis lazuli here. So this is third eye and then throat chakra. It's definitely focusing on the throat chakra with you. So I'll explain why in a minute. But the green fluorite has a lot to do with healing. And it's very calming. It's very soothing. It's a really grounding stone. So... <laughs> This really feels like healing the throat chakra. I know this is a group stone, but I still feel like I need to kind of pair the message with the lapis lazuli here. So it feels definitely like healing the throat chakra. So this has to do with your with your expression, with your emotional expression, it feels like, and that's something that needs to heal. So, so it feels like the weight will come off as that is released and it's taken you a while to kind of get in tune with that I feel like you're still getting in tune with that yeah they're saying also for a while you were kind of escaping the emotions you were going to bad habits and things like that it does feel like you're getting better with that um, also that's going to be a little bit easier for you when you're at home just because it's a familiar surrounding. Okay, so it feels like there's already this degree of emotional comfort in your environment. So you don't have to try and find that outside of yourself. There's already this kind of external emotional comfort that's there. It feels like you're still seeking something externally. In that way as well but just because that's already there and it feels a little bit more grounding as well and this emotional comfort aspect is there already it feels like it's gonna be easier for you to not um, to not give in to bad habits to escape from emotions that you need to process it also feels like you're not gonna have as many emotions to process okay but they're just they're going back to before before you were in the water before you were swimming and you were constantly sleeping um, and you were constantly bombarded by these heavy emotional energies um, from the world around you you were picking up on them empathically but then also your own feelings from your from yourself, from your situation, feelings that you were going through without picking up on them from other people, 
just because of your circumstance, the circumstance that you were in and just being on earth in general, it feels like, would bring these emotions up. You didn't know how to deal with them, though, and how to process them, and they were too heavy, and you were sleeping. So this adds a lot of emotional energy. So if your physical body is heavy, it has to do with one of your bodies. One of your body, one of your bodies is feeling that heaviness. So you guys are saying it's not your mental body. It's not your energy body. It's in this case, it's your emotional body. Your emotional body has absorbed a lot. And so it's heavier. And so the physical body has ended up reflecting that. So it's going to show up somewhere physically, eventually, in some way. It doesn't have to come through your physical body, but it will manifest in a physical way somehow to show you what your emotions are and the impact that they have and what they manifest. Holy crap, do you need to like drink more water or something? <laughs> I always end up drinking water in your reading, but I think I'm drinking even more this time than usual. I don't know, but that's like the third time in five minutes. You're like the water woman, so... <laughs> I don't know if I'm like, what's happening, but, okay, yeah, so they are saying water does help to um, flush out emotions, so they're saying that it's, it's not only good for you to drink plenty of water, they're also saying high quality water um, to make sure the water is pure. But they're also talking about alkalinity. Um, and I feel like that would be something for you to research would be um, like alkaline foods or alkaline diets. And how can you get your system to be more hydrated more alkaline versus more acidic. And then it feels like um, your energy is going to flow better. So since it has appeared physically, you can also do something physically to kind of do the reverse, to kind of so it's gone from your emotional body to forward, in a sense, to your physical body. But you can go from your physical body kind of backwards through to your emotional body and help your emotional body through your physical body as well. So it doesn't only have to be emotional kinds of cleanses, in a sense, that you do. The other things that they've said, though, in the other videos, that's something that is still important. So like grounding to the earth and connecting to your emotions, those things that they were talking about, I feel like that especially suited you for when you were in the other environment. But they're saying that it is still really important to know and to include, especially as emotions come up or as habits come up even. They're also saying that exercise is good, like running and things like that. That's even come up before in your thought form sessions. Um, 
But it almost feels like if you're doing something like running, not only are you helping to cleanse your physical body, okay, Okay, so for one thing, one thing they're mentioning is you're also breathing a lot more. If you're running, you're breathing a lot. And breathing tends to, for some reason, I don't even fully get why, but it tends to connect you to your emotional body. And if you're breathing really deeply, it helps you actually process through emotions. But then the other reason is because if you're doing something like emotion, um, Sorry, if you're doing something like running, you're automatically a little bit more mental. You're automatically not so emotional because you're focusing. You're doing this really physical exerting activity. And so your mind, you just become more mental. You're not focused on some emotion as much. You're focused on, you're focused on what you are doing. So you automatically step into... The mental body a little bit more, and that's another reason why it's good, and that's another reason to have more discipline, and more discipline in that way, because you're kind of doing two things at once. Not only, again, are you helping your physical body, you're helping it with its endurance, and it feels like that will even help you with the scuba diving as well. That'll help you with, with the swimming endurance because it does take a lot of physical endurance to do the kind of um, career that you're doing you have some new guide here I don't know if I've felt this guide before okay but we don't really have time. Um, yeah, she's not going to introduce herself just because of the time limit. Because I'm definitely coming up to the time frame. Actually, I'm a little bit over now. But let me see if they have anything else quick to say here to kind of wrap up. Okay, so it feels like the kind of core of the issue is the throat chakra, though. But again, this is in your emotional body. So this is a really specific throat chakra. Okay, this, this is a chakra residing in your emotional body specifically. So even for that reason, that's another reason why drinking water can, can help with that. But again, also... Focusing on doing something that takes you into your mental body a bit more. Being a little bit more mental. And that's going to help you with discipline. Because there's almost this tendency to get in an emotion and go, ah, I don't feel like doing this you know, physical exertion or whatever, but that's an emotion. So they're saying that emotions like that like negative emotions, they actually take away discipline. They take away mental discipline. They take away physical discipline. And it's like they try to stretch and expand into other areas that they're really not supposed to reside over. And so they cause us to make decisions in a lot of other areas. All of a sudden, we're not doing the physical things or the mental things that we should be doing. Like maybe we're not meditating anymore. Or we're not running or whatever it is. or We're not eating right. And none of those things are really meant to be triggered so much by your emotional body or by its needs. You know, those are physical body needs or mental or spirit body needs. And the emotional body kind of takes over and sort of kicks, um, kind of kicks those off of our to-do list in a sense for that day. And so then you end up with just this emotional, expanding emotional body. And it carries too much weight. So you have to think about 
almost your emotional body's area in a sense. And there are certain things that it isn't supposed to dictate for you or for your life. So they're saying that if you have an emotion, try to process it differently um, instead of allowing it, instead of giving into it and feeding it and allowing it to start taking over all these other areas um, versus just its its own area that it's supposed to own, that it's supposed to dictate. Okay, so that is all that they have to say for this reading. So thank you very much, and I will see you soon. Namaste.